Okay, um, I would like to jump to a movie that I don't know if you, maybe if you've talked about much, and, and I'm curious about this because I don't think this movie was a big hit, and um, well, let's, let's, it was not really it? horror or sci-fi. <laughs> but it was kind of, I guess you could say, sci-fi fantasy comedy. Wait, wait, wait! Oh, how yeah. many syllables? Wait, can you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 This one, this one, this is something I know. Or this one, 1983, the man who wasn't there. That, that's the man that, who wasn't in my there. Ex okay, so it's not a horror film, but in my experience, it was uh, the worst uh, horror movie. No, no, this, really? this was a Steve Gutenberg comedy. Worse than 1984. In 3D. Wow. In 3D, uh, about, it was kind of like, well, it was supposed, I guess, to be this kind of like wacky okay. kind of comedy. The only film I cried on, <gasps> and the oh. producer said, why are you crying? And I said, the fact that you don't know why I'm crying is why I'm crying. Wow. Oh. It was, the, you know, I, I, it was supposed to be my big break. Yeah. Um, it was, you know, every 10 years 3D comes out again, as you know, yeah. another reincarnation. Right, this was the, during the resurgence again of that. Yeah, and it was it was Paramount's attempt to battle Jaws, Universal's Jaws 3D. So right. it was a common 3D. And I screen tested against people like Jennifer Jason Lee and Christy Brinkley, so I wow. lucked out by getting it. Yeah, ah, lucky you. <laughs> yeah. And while I'm screen testing, um, Everybody's killing themselves laughing, and I'm thinking, this is not funny, but it was the 80s, and everybody was on cocaine. Oh, my gosh. So everything was funny. Wow. <laughs> that, that makes sense now that I've seen the movie. No, 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 Steve, Steve Gutenberg was not, not on cocaine, but I think everybody else was. Right. And I, when I started crying was we were in Washington, D.C., and the DP was on the ground in the middle of the road, like having a baby tantrum. And I thought, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't believe wow. this. And I, I just start crying. I went to my trailer and the producer came and said, why are you crying? And I said, the fact that you do not know I'm crying is why well, I'm crying. The thing about the movie is, too, is like, you know. Oh, and the, the, the other thing is it was the biggest, the biggest lie and misrepresentation of my life. Yeah. We, and the movie, too, you watch it, you, you, the premise you think would be this kind of lighthearted kind of caper action mystery film, but it's rated R and there's like, there's some fairly... Fairly graphic violence, and there's a lot of nudity. There's a lot in of nudity, yeah. but yeah. not not the kind. Of, but elements that in any other kind salacious. of movie. Yeah, salacious. Yeah, you're actually nude a lot in the movie. Yeah. And I wasn't. Here's what here's what happened. They said it's only going to be in silhouette. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow, is that not the okay. case? No, no, no. Let me tell you this. Okay, so I'm believing them. I'm thinking this is a Paramount picture. They're not going right, right. So, yeah. And this is a Steve Gutenberg picture. It's not going to be salacious. Yeah. No. And uh, so. They said it's top secret. Nobody can come on the set. We're not even letting entertainment tonight on the set. Ooh, that's <laughs> big. So my my boyfriend at the time was a was a cinematographer, and mm -hmm. I'm a cinematographer, and they wouldn't even let him on the set. Really? So I'm doing all this nude stuff. Because basically the idea is when you're invisible, and they're you're telling yes, and they're telling you're... me it has to be this bright on the set because it's 3D. But you're only going to be seen in silhouette. Right. Oh my God. And maybe if I had stronger representation as agents, I would have been more protecting my contract. But I'm doing what I'm told because I'm an artiste. I work with people in Europe where nudity is not an issue. You're Canadian. And I'm Canadian, yeah. and I'm thinking it's Steve Gutenberg. It's a comedy. They don't need to exploit people. Blah blah blah. I'm believing everything. My first American studio picture. And I remember coming home one day and saying to my boyfriend. You know, it's 3D, and but it's really bright on the set. But they said I'm going to be in silhouette. And he said, Lisa, the way it looks on the set is the way it's going to look on the screen. Mm. I've never, it's been so, it's never gone away. To this day, I go back to this, like, reunion, and this guy that was, like, kind of the hunk high school guy, and I was in ninth grade, he was 12th grade, and I, I run into him, and he's the same height as me now because... He's wearing platform shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and I go up to him and I go, aren't you blah, 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 blah. And he said, yeah, I can't remember. And he goes, you know, I saw you in that Invisible Man film. <laughs> and yeah, over all, all the and movies. over. And the lifers from jail write you. Oh, and it's oh never gosh. over. Oh, my it's, gosh. And it's, it's like, it, it's just so, I just felt so lied to. And, and I was so I was so unhappy and felt so, It was the ultimate Hollywood. I got Hollywooded. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. And, and I made my a, best effort. And it's a, that's the thing. It's a shame because you're really good in the film, and you and Steve are really good together. And it could yeah. it could have been like it, it should have been a PG rated fun action comedy. That's and they what made I thought it, it was going to be. Why, and they made why it, was it real? It, if it had been so, and how about this? I'll never forget this in my life. Two things. One thing. I'm on this McDonald's commercial. 
Mm -hmm. And this guy goes, I remember you. I was with you in The Man Who Wasn't There. <laughs> because I was one of the cops. And I realized he was the guy, one of the guys behind me as I'm running up this, like on my hands and knees, this hill. And he's behind me and I moved. So there was that, and then here's the other thing that they would never have gotten away with. But and also, had I been kind of more of an assertive and less Canadian actor, this never would have happened. But so there's the scene with the lion. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm at the zoo, and so in my mind, I'm okay with this before it happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, but remember, this is the day of the um, oh God, Jennifer Jason Leigh's. Uh, uh, Fast Times of Ridgewood High? her father. Vic Morrow. Okay. This, uh, this was the days of the Vic yeah. Morrow where everybody's taking these big chances. So, I'm okay with this. Now, when it happened, my heart was just thumping and I thought, I can't, this, this could happen to me. But I'm nude. The whole crew's on the other side of this wall and I'm with a lion <laughs> no. by myself. No. <laughs> There's no mirror. <laughs> There's no window between us. Oh. And I'm supposed to climb up this wall and get over mm -hmm. and I always wondered how he was going to do it when that lion came opposite me yeah. I had no problems climbing <laughs> <laughs> right. and I can't believe that now that there was not a stunt person that I was or nude yeah, wow. the whole crew and the director were way far away on the other side of this <laughs> wow. you know w wall at the zoo mm -hmm. D wow, come on crazy. I could have been mauled and I would have been a Vic Morrow thing too yeah, that's oh. horrible. It, it, you know and that would, mm. that would, I, it had I had stronger representation, I think that, you know, it, management and agents, that would never have happened to me. And the, the fact that they could take that chance with a lead actor, and yeah. you think that, or the trainer. I mean, look what happened to those guys in Vegas. Sure, you know, yeah. 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 I could have been a Zig, Siegfried and Roy uh, and like, and like casualty. You said, and like you said, this was Paramount. It wasn't like this was some, some sh little, little crazy little independent film. I mean, it was just Paramount Pictures. Right. You know, with like big star. So and and, and let, 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 let's, you know, I can talk about this now because I'm older, but it was also that time of the month. Oh, oh no. And wow. they, they, they all, and, you yeah. know, we, we, don't know, we don't know whether that's kind of folklore. Mm -hmm. well, right. But let's just but, say it was and yeah, I'm going to lie. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Could wow. it just been a, a thing, too, of like the, during that time, everyone was just so drugged out that they it's no one even <laughs> thought of <laughs> yeah, safety? Really. And I don't know. It was like Steve and I, I think, were, oh, no, and Jeffrey Tambor. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Now, here, here's the he's, irony. He's yeah. Okay. So Jeffrey Tambor, like, I can't tell you how many films I was in where there was a co-star that was from a television series and they just wanted to be in films, and I was in films. And every time they would turn to me and say, whatever you do, don't ever do a series because you will have no life. Over, like, every, <laughs> every, they all did. So I never did, and, and later on it did affect my career because people wanted to have a t uh, uh, TVQ. But Jeffrey was in that movie only because he wanted to get into features. Imagine mm -hmm. this guy, how big he is now. Right, yeah. And we hung out so much together. We had such a great time together. He kept me sane. He was not on drugs wow. either. He is very good in the movie. Yeah, he is good in the movie. Yeah, day. but he almost got cut out. Because you know that one scene where he's driving and he has to do that long monologue? Yeah. Uh -huh. They, they didn't have time to shoot it. And they were to cut it out. And he, he said, you can't do that. You, 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 you can't do it. He goes, that's why I did this film. The, the, the whole reason I did this film was because of this monologue. You have to shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> so they did. But I felt so bad for him that he had to beg. Oh, wow. To do this scene. To be in the man who wasn't there. And, 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 and then Art, Art Hindle. Art Hindle. Oh, yeah, who's yeah, yeah. great in The Brood. And I always, brood. see, I, I had had a crush on Art Hindle since before I was even in the movies. Wow. And so I thought, oh my God. Like, there's a couple times, like, Christopher Plummer, Tony Curtis, and Art Hindle. <laughs> was, he, was he Canadian? Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wasn't he engaged by the Body Snatchers? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, the remake. Right, yes, yeah. excellent. Oh, wow. Well, you know, I will say that you have fantastic 80s hair in The Man Who Wasn't There. That's true. Yes. You really yes. do. Yes. Yeah. You really I know. Fantastic. And I hated that hair, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hated Thanks, that Sean, hair. Thanks, Sean, for bringing it up. <laughs> it like Princess Diana. Yeah, yeah, boy, it was like these, they gave me these hot rollers, and it was like, I look like a soap opera actress. <laughs> and so that later, when I start getting wetted down and not wearing as much makeup, and right, right. I remember the producers saying, Lisa looks better. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I remember, you know, the crew referring to the makeup and hair people as the wrecking crew because I they said I looked better <laughs> before I went into hair makeup. <laughs> wow, because wow. you know because of that big hair yeah. and all the makeup yeah, and everything yeah. else. Because you know I kept arguing with the makeup artist and she, she her her she said I, I did Dallas. 
Yeah. And I thought, that's exactly what I don't want. <laughs> <laughs>